through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin. Episode 145. <laughs> I think I was going to backhand you there. <laughs> now I just wanted to also do the... Uh, uh, so, like, sorry. Uh, I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Um, today we're going to be talking about country movies mm -hmm. in honor of the release of Hick. Mm -hmm. uh, as we said last time, these are sort of like small town settings, mm -hmm. basically, is what we're shooting for. And the most obvious place to begin this discussion is the probably the most disturbing of them. <laughs> yes. Uh, taking that possibly uh, the most memorable. Yeah, taking that idea to a very extreme. Yes. They're not all this unpleasant, but we're talking yes. about deliverance. Yes. In 1972, I was, wow. I was shocked to realize it was that old. Like 40 that. years, yeah. Yeah, 40, 40 years. years. Wow. Um, way to go Burt Reynolds. John Voight, too. Mhm. Mm um so this is the story about a group of guy friends who decide to go on a, was it rafting trip? Yeah, I think so, um, like canoeing or rafting. Yeah, go out for some country um, time, you know, take mm -hmm. an outdoor trip, basically. And they uh, end up running into some outdoor folks mm -hmm. who uh, don't take so kindly to, to their... To strangers in yeah. these parts. <laughs> and um, basically nightmares ensue mm -hmm. and... Yeah. Squeal Abduct like a pig. Yes, abductions and sexual molestations and it's rapes and murders. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny. I mean, you think back on this as well. This is, I mean, some of my most early exposure to probably John Voight, Ned mm. Beatty, and Burt Reynolds. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if I had seen anything before. I don't even remember what the circumstances I saw when I first saw this, but I was mm -hmm. young. Like, yeah. I was pretty young, like maybe 10 or younger. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I really fully appreciate <laughs> Ever since every... then, Spencer never went back to the woods. <laughs> yeah. Well, sadly, I grew up next to a river, so oh, no. probably maybe never want to go down there again. Oh. Um, <laughs> but, yes, and... Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I really fully appreciated how crazy it was mm -hmm. until, like, later and watching it more as an adult. Yeah. Um, but this is sort of like the nightmare situation. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure most country people are very nice. Yes. Like, this is... But this is that idea of, like, you know, we have a small insular community. We don't want outsiders or strangers. You're outsiders and strangers, so therefore you don't fit the same like ethical or moral restrictions than the, maybe and the there's people there's probably, you know, there's probably some sort of like urban equivalent. Like, oh yeah. Sort of serial killer or something. Or just like, I would say any hood or ghetto is probably very similar. Yes. Tourists getting robbed and shot and mugged. Yes, equally as a stereotype, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah, yeah, so, probably. Or maybe more, I don't know. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, I mean, it's funny to think this was nominated for a whole bunch of Academy Awards. Hmm. Like, uh, it's nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Editing. Hmm. Which, I mean, I remember it, but I don't remember it being that mm. great. I mean, it, it was disturbing. Like, yeah. I don't, I mean, there's any number of, like, but, small town movies that I found disturbing. Yeah, but if you think about how many movies that have been, uh, you know, very far-reaching that have not got Academy recommendation that have been disturbing for, like Pulp Fiction, which yeah. came later. That was very disturbing in a very similar manner, and it didn't necessarily get a Best Picture at a nod. So. Yeah, no, you're, you're totally so true, and perhaps... Maybe by that time we're m m uh, dulled to it and well, <laughs> desensitized. <laughs> or you could look at it this way, that it's still memorable. I mean, we mm, still... Mm -hmm. I mean, Squeal Like a Pig is yeah. still something and that I remember. And banjos yeah. is pretty iconic. Yeah, so perhaps that is a good indicator mm, that, yeah. you know, they did do a good job <laughs> because it made an <laughs> we impression. We do remember it. It did make an impression, but more so of the sort of um, comparison I was talking about was another film that came out only a couple years after mm -hmm. that, and that was The Texas Chainsaw yes. Massacre. Again, small little town, mm -hmm. a group of outsiders stumble into. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they run into a family of... <laughs> um, cannibal murderers? Cannibal murderers is probably the most <laughs> positive way of spinning it. That's a weird thing to say. I wonder if you, if by calling someone a cannibal, you're implying they're also a murderer. No, because I guess somebody else can do it for it. Sorry, um, semantics. Moving on. You want to talk a weird semantic <laughs> argument? Uh, I was looking at it, and you know, uh, the way they actually title the movie, mm -hmm. according to IMDb, is the Texas 
Chainsaw Massacre. I'm Two pretty separate sure, words? Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone thereafter had chainsaws yeah. one word. And yeah. I don't know what technically the correct way. They might both be correct. Maybe at the time there wasn't a, a very solid which one was right. <laughs> but I, I was like, whoa. Like, I was looking it up. I was like, chainsaw. And I was like, oh, there's one in 84 That doesn't or 86. That doesn't seem right. And I went to that. I was like, nope, this is the second one. What is it called? I was like, the Texas chainsaw. I was like, oh, there we go. Wait, chainsaw? Weird. Semantics again, Weird. but yeah. I, I mm -hmm. found that very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, this is crazy because this was 74, mm -hmm. and this is, you know, way before um, Halloween. Mm -hmm. This is way before. Well, Halloween Friday. was 72, wasn't it? No, I think it was 79. Uh, really? I'm pretty sure. Oh, it was I'm, th there. I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of Exorcist. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but, you know, it was way before like that. I think mm -hmm. Friday the 13th was probably... You know, 80s, late, yeah. Late um, 70s, early 80s, yes, probably. Yes, 82 or something like mm -hmm. that. And so this is pretty, I mean, ahead of its time, mm -hmm. if you think about that, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, like... An equally memorable, like, deliverance. <laughs> which, and it's... I mean, those were much more prolific in terms of the film series mm -hmm. overall. And this one sort of, I guess, come on the rise, especially with the remake mm -hmm. and then the sequel, or I guess it was prequel to the yeah. remake and stuff <laughs> like that. Um, but in some ways, I found this possibly more disturbing mm -hmm. because it's a, like a town or a family so mm -hmm. to speak yeah. who are massacring them it's and there's you know that one ultimate one you know Leatherface yes. that's like the most messed up like you know uh, Mike Myers or mm -hmm. something like that but there's the family around them that are mm -hmm. pretty messed up still yes. and sort of like are completely permissive of everything that's going on mm -hmm. on at the very least yeah and the simple fact that you have like a, a someone who's going out and snatching people, you know, and then you have a family supporting yeah. it. That's a pretty horrible thing. Cause usually we think serial killers, stuff like that, loner being loners mm -hmm. made ourselves and having an entire group of people for alibis and support. That's just, even. I creepier. mean, it's become its own sort of genre mm -hmm. too. When you consider things like uh wrong turn, mm -hmm. kind of that same sort Hills of have eyes Hill high, yeah, and the, um, all, the house of the thousand corpses, Rob yep. zombies. Or the House of Wax was sort of similar too yeah, as well. Yeah. Basically, um, it became a horror staple yes. after this was the idea of like how much scarier it was to have a serial killer with a family who's as equally as crazy. Well, I think I think the thing that makes it scary is you don't know who to trust then. Yes. Like if I mean you have True. your friends, but when you're trying to figure out your way in this place, it's sort of like everyone you run into is like, are these people going to screw me <laughs> over? And the odds are, the chances are yes. Mm -hmm. So trust no one is what you should learn. <laughs> if you go to small towns, they mm -hmm. don't want you, and trust none yes. of them. Yes. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah. Get your car covered in dirt. Beat it up a couple times. Maybe uh, knock a few teeth out. You might... yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just... A slightly, Stereotypes abound. A slightly more positive perspective of this, mm -hmm. uh, one that I sort of have a small connection to, what? is yeah, is uh, Roadhouse. Ah, yes, Roadhouse. <laughs> uh, besides being an awesome film yes. about a bar bouncer in a small town. It rips out people's throats. Come on. It's awesome. Yeah. You learn from the best, you know, Sam Elliott. <laughs> Pain don't hurt. Yeah. Um, Roadhouse is just, it's just a fun movie. Like, it is. And you know, it's, it's silly, but it's fun. It kind of is good in that it sort of tells both sides of the coin, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. You know, there is sort of the sort of rednecky aspects to mm -hmm. it but it's you have the good ones and the bad yes. ones you have good people mm -hmm. who just want to have a good time mm -hmm. in a bar and then you have evil ones who want to sort of take over the town yep. and milk every little last cent out of it so um it kind of covers both sides of that mm -hmm. coin uh my small connection for those of you who are tantalized I'm, by that i'm tease, just on the edge of my seat i went to school with a guy who was the nephew of jane lynch boom Mind's being blown right now. There you go. Because you talk about, like, probably, I guess, late 80s sex symbols. She was probably up there. Yeah. You know, she was, she was pretty hot at that yeah. time. Um, and she played a doctor in this movie, so she yes. had brains, too. <laughs> um, the complete package. Yeah. I, I more, I, I think I got more into Roadhouse more as an adult. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I probably saw it as a kid and didn't really think of it. It was the first Rift Tracks, so that's, really? that's, uh, wow. that's, that's where it holds a special place in my heart. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Um, I know of Jane Lynch more from Curly Sue. Mm -hmm. That's more of where I, uh, was exposed to her, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's good on her for that. Yeah. And Patrick Swayze, this is like, I mean, you, people could argue Ghost is their favorite. Patrick Swayze movie. People could argue, you know, um, Dirty Dancing, Dirty Dancing, Point Break, Point Break. Good, good, good calls on both mm -hmm, of them. Mm -hmm. um, 
But I think this is the penultimate just Swayze. Role. Yeah. Like the other ones, he's with other people, and it's kind of more about chemistry. This is like Swayze, Swayzing it up. Just. Yeah, Jane Lynch is kind of there too, but yeah. you're right. I agree. This is sort of like probably the mo- the swayziest of them all. Um, <laughs> yeah, I like that. I, I think I think you've the sold on me. Swayziest Roadhouse of them. is my favorite Swayze movie. He just sold it. On me. I was thinking about those other ones. I was like, maybe it is Point Break. No, no, no. Nope. This is it. Got it. Boom. <laughs> Nailed. Yeah. <laughs> Roadhouse Rocks. Um, <laughs> sadly, not everyone agrees as much as us. And it was nominated for one, two, three, four, five Razzies. Oh, yeah. I like it because it's bad. I think it's good. I like it just period. Like, pain don't hurt. That's an actual lie. What's, the, what's wrong? The pain? doctor is sewing him up. Does that hurt? Just pain. Pain don't hurt. You gotta be That's badass. exactly what pain is. You gotta be badass, man. Come on. That's exactly Come on. What Come on. Is. Um, I love it. I say it's good. I also Let us love know it. your feedback at MacGuffinPodcast.com. <laughs> are you Razzie fan or are you not? I think it's good. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was nominated for Worst Picture, Worst Actor, <laughs> Worst Supporting Actor, Worst Director, Worst Screenplay. Come on, people. Where's your heart? I wonder if this is when the Razzies even started. I didn't even realize they went back 1990, to It's got to be probably... Very early on. Maybe they saw Roadhouse and they were like, we need to make an award show for horrible movies. (laughs) Also, I want to note, Mm -hmm. um, the director, do name Rowdy Harrington. Good name. Good name for him. Um, Yeah. He also directed a film called Gladiator. Not the one that you're probably immediately popping to mind with Russell Crowe. Oh, no, no, no. This is um, Gladiator starring Cuba Gooding Jr. about um, street fighters. (laughs) Awesome movie. What? Love it. Yeah. I what? love it. If anyone has seen We do seen... a round table of this. <laughs> totally, dude. That's a good call. I'm like right here. We will do a round table of Gladiator. And if you know of it, write in and let me know your thoughts. If you haven't seen it, check it out and wow. let me know what you think of it. I I'm, like I'm it. intrigued. It's a I'm guilty intrigued. pleasure. It's a guilty I'm pleasure. There's Cuba Gooding Jr. when he was super young and it uh-huh. has um <laughs> What's his name? Like James Marsh or something like that. One of the two guys who was the cadets accused of murder and uh, a few good men. Okay. Um, huh. So well. he was kind of a big thing in the early 90s. <laughs> but it's got like <laughs> Warrant on the soundtrack <laughs> and I just love it. Um, it's got Brian Dennehy. Oh, yeah. It's It's got uh, Frank Loja or no, Robert Loja. Robert Loja in it. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm just I'm just a big fan. What can I, I say? I noticed. Um, probably one of the most positive sort of country mm-hmm. films is Doc Holliday. Yes. Um, or Hollywood. Hollywood's. <laughs> <laughs> Too much tombstone oh, yeah. on the brain. Yeah. Um, another small town one, I guess, if, <laughs> if you think about it. Um, no, Doc Hollywood. Mm-hmm. The Michael O. J. Fox story about a um, big city doctor mm-hmm. who gets broken down in a small town and is first to sort of work there as a doctor to make the money to mm-hmm. uh, fix his car, fix his and, car get and get out of there. <laughs> and, you know, uh, along the way, he sort of becomes fond of all the people in that town mm-hmm. that include, you know... And it's Woody, small town charm. Yeah. You know, he's got uh, Woody Harrelson, mm-hmm. uh, Bridget Fonda. Mm. Uh, he falls in it's love with a, while a small town that. girl while he's there. What was it? take the midnight train going on no, and on. No, and on. No. <laughs> and on. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm trying to think, what was, what was the film that... It was Cars. That was the mm. film that was basically Doc Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood. Hollywood, yes. God damn it. <laughs> Doc Hollywood. For those of you who have not seen Doc Hollywood, if you've seen Cars... You have seen Doc Same Hollywood. basic premise. <laughs> and you know, I guess we could have talked about Cars now I think about it. Um, but I like, I like Doc Hollywood. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Michael J. Fox, this is like 91. Yeah. So this is high, ver- yeah. very early on in him. I mean, you had probably at least one Back yeah, to the Future at this definitely. point. Maybe least, two. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is... Possibly even when Family Ties was still going on. Maybe. I mean, yeah. probably at the towards the very end no, at yeah, the very that's least. Actually, that's probably, I would say so. If not, it just ended. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I think, I think it's a fun film. Oh yeah, it's a good movie, and and you know, there's not very many Michael J. Fox leading roles, and this is a good one. So. Possibly, I don't know if that's necessarily true. He's kind of a big star now. He's a big star, but he, how many? <laughs> he hasn't had that many leading roles for quite a while. 
uh, a fright nurse was probably probably you know, well. I, I'm, I'm sense, saying but... not just recently. I mean, <laughs> even like between like Doc Hollywood and the fright nurse, there's yeah. a pretty big gap there where he doesn't have really that much going I on. Don't, so. I don't know if I'm gonna agree with that, but he, he's definitely tailed off once the Parkinson's really kicked in. <laughs> um, I love Spin City. Just throwing that out there. Ah, Side note, um, but you know. This is probably one of the best examples of a big city person falling in love with small town charm. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it usually is not the case. Yeah. Usually small towns will mess you up. Yeah, and they get a bad rap for it, and then that continues to proliferate the stereotypes. Yeah. So, um, nice inversion saying, hey, look, this is just a guy out of his ordinary like life and he's in this other place and it's different but he gets used to it and i gotta note the director michael canton jones hmm. really weird career the dudes had hmm. uh he did this he did rob roy okay he did the jackal if okay. you remember that yeah. Love Bruce both Willis of those movie. Movies. yeah he did city by the sea the james franco robert de niro film okay lose lost me a little bit there it's about a police guy <laughs> whose son is accused of like a murder okay and he has to like work outside the bounds of the law to okay. prove his son was innocent and they did basic instinct two mm. not one two mm. yeah mm. that's kind of a crazy yeah no st I guess you can't pin him down. I mean, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's true. That's a good point. So good on him for that. Uh, one that you had raised probably is one that will pop to the minds mm -hmm. immediately of a lot of people was Sling Blade. Mm -hmm. um, the Billy Bob starring, directed, written mm -hmm. film from 96, which is crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. um, Some people go Sling Blade. I just them down. Kaiser Blade. Cause my, I got some I was <laughs> <Come made. on. laughs> I got guys That's my Billy Bob Thornton. Um, <laughs> Please don't ever do that again. I will. I'm glad we got it on film, so it can, you can see why you should never do that. There's a lot of. Ever again. <laughs> I should never do any impressions, but that will not stop me from doing them. Um, I mean, this was the. I mean, he had acted before mm -hmm. Sling Blade, but this was sort of like the breakout yes. of this Billy, was the Bob, Billy Thor Bob explosion. Um, because he was so heavily involved mm -hmm. with it. I mean, he wrote, directed, and starred in mm -hmm. it. And I mean, this. That's the trifecta. Really, it was probably the first uh, instance where people really were like, oh, this guy could act. Because mm -hmm. he had he'd been in like corny yeah. sitcom TV shows yeah. like Hearts, uh, Hearts of Fire or whatever it was. The. Um, was it a uh, John Ritter TV okay. show? Okay. With, was it Marky Post or whatever? Okay. Um, where he played the friend, you know, whatever. And he did a lot of those sort of like dopey friend roles. Mm -hmm. But this is like a, a guy with significant was it retardation? Yeah, is that I think his so. thing? Mental retardation. Um, but you know, he's in this small community and mm -hmm. he's interacting with the world around him, trying mm -hmm. to sort of like. Um, be accepted and the small community yeah. kind of takes him in for the same reasons. Yeah. I mean. And you know, it was, it was really probably one of the best examples of someone who's got some sort of mental yeah. um, problems mm -hmm. trying to be act. I mean, you guys should throw out Sean Penn, but it's always one of those things that's frequently overdone and he did an mm -hmm. excellent job of doing it. He did I mean, not go full retard. Yes. To quote Tropic Thunder. <laughs> um, but, like, this film was so popular for mm -hmm. so many reasons. I mean, it was nominated for, or won Academy Award for Writing. It was okay. nominated for Best Actor. Mm. It won the Indie Spirit Award for Best Fe First Feature. Mm. It was nominated for Screen Actors Guild for Best Leading Actor and Best Cast Performance. It won the Writers Guild for Best Screenplay. Mm. I mean, this was the kind of film that... Um, Cross so many barriers mm -hmm. in terms of like it being beloved. Yeah. That like if you are a film student or someone who's interested in getting into film, like I would go look at this film yeah. and see like what he did because mm -hmm. it really is a, a great textbook example of creating a story um, that speaks on an emotional level. Mm -hmm that doesn't need huge effects or something yeah. like that to be told. It's just a great story being told and being ex appreciated because yes. of that. And, you know, I would agree with that. great, great performances help that story yeah. be told. But, I mean, you know, you had a great cast. Like, it's kind of amazing to think that, I mean, obviously he was moderate celebrity at mm -hmm. that point. So it was, like, he had Dwight Yoakam, mm -hmm. J.T. Walsh, John Ritter, Lucas Black before he wow. was... You know, Lucas Black, mm -hmm. uh, Robert Duvall. So you had a great mm -hmm. cast involved in this movie, and sort of it speaks to you know, obviously not every indie film director is going to be able to you know spend yeah. eight hundred thousand dollars or whatever they did on this film mm -hmm. and get all these people, but um, these aren't necessarily people who uh, are just known for being 
um, famous mm, people. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like Brad Pitt where they'll just add Brad Pitt mm-hmm. to something because he's a, a sellable yeah, property. Yeah. You know, like these are character actors yes. who really do a great job of taking these characters Especially on. Especially Robert Duvall. He tends to Robert be Duvall. that guy that shows up in movies you wouldn't expect him to be in and ha- sells some r- role really well. And I think John Ritter is underappreciated for mm-hmm. his willingness to do stuff besides just the slapsticky yeah. comedy. I mean, that's where he's most famous. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, you know, like even like Bad Santa, yeah. he plays like roles that aren't necessarily funny but he does them just because mm-hmm. he's a talented actor who doesn't get his due for it a lot of time yeah. so good on him for that but sadly Billy Bob has not really done a heck of a lot as a director mm. um, beyond this you yeah. think he would have but he did All the Pretty Horses he did something called Daddy and Them which I never heard of and he did a documentary uh, from I think last year called The King of Luck which I vaguely remember hmm. but never saw huh, so interesting Billy Bob, you really should be directing more things. Just mm-hmm. throwing that out there right now. Um, continuing on, one that is sort of a guilty pleasure for me. <laughs> um, I admit, I saw it in the theater. Mm, I actually I probably did too. Actually bought it on DVD. Ooh. I don't know about that. Um, I don't think I went that far. Um, but it's a guilty pleasure for me, and that is Joe Dirt. Yes, the David Spade um, tale about a young boy who. Uh, searching for his parents mm-hmm. um, all across America. Very familiar trope. Yes. He's, he's, he plays like a hardcore redneck mm-hmm. in the film. Yes. He was recounting his story full to on a... Mullet. Yeah, full on mullet. To um, like a radio station? I think yes, it, yes, to... Uh, was it um, Dennis Miller? Oh, that's right. He was just yeah. in disbelief about this stupid yes. redneck. Yes. From, it was sort of like the big city guy making mm-hmm. fun of the little guy. Yeah. And... You know, gradually his, he becomes to appreciate a yes. story of trying to find his family. I think, you know, I think it's a nice little story about trying to find your family, mm-hmm. um, but ultimately realizing that genetics don't make a family because yes. he comes to a different family yes. at the end. You know, his, his love, these other characters that he's mm-hmm. met along the way that really genuinely cared about him yes. and his story. And that I think that's a good, a good, mm-hmm. a matter. I mean, granted, it's sort of really hokey comedy, oh, sort yeah. of over the top slapstick stuff. But even um, like the cynical Dennis Miller character by the end actually cares about the things that Joe cares about. And I, I mean, I, I think, I think it's. I think I think that's a nice message, and I mm-hmm. think that's the thing I take away most from it. I mean, there's stupid stuff like, you know, the dog's balls getting frozen <laughs> to the deck. Like, okay, I'll acknowledge that's really stupid. And Kid Rock is so, over, is so over the top as sort of like his nemesis yes. in the movie. However, what an appropriate... If you're going to pick a country, redneck-esque villain, yes. they're probably as much cool. better naturally in their natural state than Kid Rock. It's true, it's true. But I mean, I like, you know... I like He's kind of the people's champion in that regard. I like uh, Christopher Walken as sort of like the mafioso Mm -hmm. in hiding who sort of becomes like a father figure. Mm -hmm. Or Rosanna Arquette who he meets at the alligator um, farm or Mm -hmm. whatever it is. Alligator Park. Crocodile Park. (laughs) Um, who sort of becomes a mother figure. Uh I think it's it's really just nice that, you know, you got not only you make your own family, Mm -hmm. but also, you know, Somebody who loves him for who he is, and yes. not you know, um, not judging him from his origins. Exactly, yeah. And so I think I think that's nice. Mm-hmm. I think it's a nice story. I was shocked to see that this was not nominated for any Razzies. I think that's because in the grand spectrum of the David Spade meter, it's this, much better than a yeah, lot. It is not in that horrible, horrible range yeah. where some of them fall. It, it does not get as bad as some of the others yeah. for sure. Um, but it actually was nominated for a Teen Choice Award for comedy. Yes. Didn't win, but Aww. it was nominated. Shocked. Shocked. Oh, pouring one out for you, um, Joe And also, I gotta say, the director, Denny Gordon, mm-hmm. does a ton of TV work, but he also was responsible for What a Girl Wants, the Amanda Bies film. Mm. Me? I actually kind of have a soft spot for Amanda mm. Bies, I so I don't do. hate it. But he also was responsible for... New York Minute. Do you remember New York Minute? I think it was only my consciousness for a New York Minute. uh, Ashley and Mary Kate Olsen movie. Oh, that's like the last feature film that they're in before like they completely like disappeared into the ether or stepped back really from acting as a really serious. Uh, Yeah. uh, Yeah. So. I guess uh, that kind of uh, helped tail off his mm-hmm. theatrical directing <laughs> career. So, um, Put a real end point to that career. Yes. 
Uh, I think one of the best country films to talk about, yes. though, is Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Yes. And that is because that really raises the idea of the stereotype of yes, the country person. Exactly. Because it's about sort of these city kids who run into these rednecks mm -hmm. who think they're basically the people out of Texas Chainsaw Texas Massacre. Here, yeah. um, when they're really just these nice mm -hmm. country folk. Mm -hmm. And all these mi miscommunications between the two mm -hmm. of them keep escalating yes. as like... The kids keep dying mm -hmm. through accidents, yes. and they think these kids are trying to kill themselves <laughs> yes, in front yes, of them. And yes, like it's all a these miscommunications. Cult, I think is yeah, what they exactly. Think it is. <laughs> and it's just it's funny. Um, yes, it it's, flips tropes on its head. It's it it's great some performances by you know Alan Tudyk. Yes, uh, probably my favorite performance by uh, Katrina Bowden oh, yes. from uh, Thirty Rock. Siri. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of. Taylor Levine after his short yes. stint in Reaper, which yes. I was a yes, guilty exactly. pleasure of mine. He's pops up every now and then yeah. as a very talented actor. Really doesn't get a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. though. He um, was a great cuddly like bear sidekick in this movie. Yes, um, it was. This film has gotten a lot of different awards. Nothing mm -hmm. really major, major, but it did win a lot of like film festival stuff. Like mm. it won the audience award at South by Southwest. Mm. Um, which Deserves is, it. It's great. And, you know, it's sad that the director, Eli Craig, mm -hmm. besides this, has only directed one short and one episode of a TV show. Mm. The dude deserves to direct yeah. a lot. I mean, he was responsible for both writing and directing. Oh, wow. This. Yeah, so what the heck is he doing? I mean, <laughs> super smart guy. Like, this guy deserves opportunities. Mm -hmm. If you have money, hire this dude. Yes. Like, honestly, like, I don't know what's wrong with you. And if you have not seen this, it's on Netflix streaming. Mm -hmm. It's available at Scarecrow. Like, it's, it's definitely worth your time. It's totally worth your time. It's a lot of fun. E even if you're not into horror movies, it's definitely worth it. And it's an interesting and one that sort of keeps you on your toes as to where it's going mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how crazy it's going to really get. And e interestingly enough, like, when I saw this movie, I, I was pretty sure from the first few minutes where it was going to go, mm. but I was still entertained and carried along the entire time even cool. though i was nothing necessarily like the general way it was going shocked me i was very very entertained by the way they did it yeah they handled it, it very well great so that brings us to this uh this friday mm -hmm. which is the 11th yes yes, yes. yes. this friday the 11th yes. we have hick coming mm -hmm. out with chloe Moror. chloe grace moretz moretz that's yeah who's last. hick girl for mm -hmm. those of you who don't remember yes. uh, the name. Uh, it's also got Blake Lively, mm -hmm. Eddie Redmayne, for those of you who remember our uh, roundtable discussion of My Week with Marilyn. Mm -hmm. He was in that. Mm -hmm. uh, Alec Baldwin, Juliet Lewis, Rory Culkin, Anson Mounts, full of famous people. Mm -hmm. Like, no question about that. And this is, I think, what the story... I she runs away from home? I forget what the... Yes, she uh, seeks the bright lights of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she runs into... Oh, so that's right. I remember now. Yeah, she runs away from home and meets Blake Lively, who is a con artist. Yes. And they kind of... She sort kind of, of falls in love. Yeah, gets, kind of gets wrapped up in the grifting business. Yeah, yeah. it's it's it, look, it looks crazy. I mean, sort of like a road movie, mm -hmm. somewhat, too. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I love Chloe Moretz. I think she's yeah. an incredible actor. Mm -hmm. Um you know, Blake Lively's pretty good, and a lot of the other people. Alec Baldwin's always entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I think we mentioned it when we talked about Alec Baldwin, was that? Or we talked, we thought about talking about it when we talked about Alec Baldwin. Or we thought about talking about <laughs> Alec Baldwin. I don't remember. Alec Baldwin is what brought my attention. There's a to lot of movie. information up in up in. Spencer's my point head. being is Alec Baldwin was ultimately what brought my attention mm. to this movie in the first place. Okay. So whatever reason it was, mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm interested to check it out. You know, mm -hmm. it's got a good cast. I don't necessarily think the premise or the trailer really sold me on yeah. it, but the people involved make yeah. me curious still yeah. nonetheless. Hopefully. It's got Las Vegas in the synopsis, so that <laughs> intrigues Spencer's me right there. Spencer's um, into it. <laughs> yes. So, mm -hmm. that's it for this episode. Let us know your thoughts. Next week, we're going to be talking about or next episode, it's not a week, I keep forgetting. <laughs> tomorrow. Um, tomorrow. We're talking about people who play by their own rules, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, vigilantes and mm -hmm. stuff like that, in honor of God Bless America. Yes. And uh, can let us know your thoughts about that and this at mcguffinpodcast.com twitter.com slash mcguffincast facebook.com slash mcguffinpodcast phone number 323-761-9842 um, we're on iTunes we're on Blip we're on Roku mm -hmm. find us on Get Glue. check in check in check in <laughs> we appreciate that leave us reviews we appreciate those too mm -hmm. and we'll see you mañana